good afternoon to everyone all right i hope everyone is man <clears throat> managing well and you know just trying to make it make it through uh make it through times in this world you know uh things are definitely different um those who live in spirit you definitely know the differences that are going on in this world you know um there's a lot happening. There's a lot happening. But I hope everyone is managing, even though I know <laughs> without Jesus, I mean, you're not, you can't really manage. But um, I pray that his compassion, his compassion, and for the sake of the prayers of the righteous, that he has compassion and mercy, that you may be able to endure the times that are happening and find righteousness in him. All right. So again, good afternoon. And, uh, you know, I just want to talk a little bit with everyone, with everyone. Um, a lot of us are ripping and running, ripping and running. And we don't have time to sit down and be fed something nourishing to the body. You know, something that can propel you forward in things that are meaningful, like your salvation. You know, <clears throat> I'll start off with this, you know, if you're in school, right, if you're in school and all you do during classwork assignments or projects or homeworks or exams, you know, all you do is copy other people's work. You know, you copy everyone's work all the time, right? You're subject to whatever scores that those people get. Sometimes you'll copy answers that are right. And many times you'll copy answers that are wrong, which is subject to the own understanding and knowledge of someone else. And you will get the same scores that they get because you're just copying. But if you do the homework yourself, you come home, you put it in your heart to want to learn and you study, you research, you practice the, you know, whatever it is that you're learning in school at home and you try to understand. When it's time to do these classworks and assignments, you'll have the right questions to ask and you will also be receiving knowledge and understanding about the things that you're learning that you can follow when the teachers are speaking on certain things that they know of. You'll be able to follow them because you've done the homework You've humbled yourself to do the homework and study at home or in your private time to understand things. Now you're coming with the right questions. And when the tests come, when those tests and exams come, you will know the right answers from the wrong answers. He who has ears or she who has ears, let her hear these things. It's no different with Jesus. You can't rely on you can't rely on everyone's understanding of him. You know, you tried everything. Many of you have tried many inventions out of your own hearts. You sought after so many different gods, doctrines of devils. You know, you believe in the energies of the earth. You know, you believe that, you know, we are gods, we are the all sufficient ones and you know, <clears throat> I mean, I can go on and on. This is many things that, you know, man has sought after from his own heart and woman. And Satan will help you. He, he, Satan will help you to adopt these things because it, it it's geared towards his plan. It helps him and it moves, it separates you from Christ, you know. What he wanted to do to Peter sift him like wheat pretty much he wanted to sift peter like wheat he wanted his faith to be on one side and him on the other side but there was no connection between him and the father it's no different than what he wants to do with you guys with us all of us what you have to understand is that everything that i say i'm subject to it myself 
There's a reason why they say you fight the good fight. You you fight. You know, righteousness is imputed in you. None of you by your works, nor Jew, nor Muslim, nor Christian, Hinduism, or whatever it is that you practice, none of you by your works will be able to obtain righteousness. Righteousness is something that is imputed to you, is given to you because of the works of he who is righteous, Jesus Christ. So anyone who believes on him and conforms to his image, conforms to his ways, live by his words, righteousness will manifest in you through him because it is the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of which is the spirit of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is what will be inside of you, helping you to do all things that please the Father. <clears throat> this form of wisdom and knowledge and understanding is available to everyone. The problem is that the world will not humble itself to seek him. It's very easy to seek him. It's just a it's just a humbling decision. You just have to say to my say to yourself, I don't know, and I want to know. And then you just start praying and seeking him. But many of you won't do that. You seek a lot of other things because you are basing your wisdom off of worldly understanding. If you haven't seen it before then you don't want to seek it. If it's not something that you've heard before that resonated with you, then you don't want to go see what it's about. You can't see him, so therefore he must not exist. Oh, I believe there's something, but I don't think it's what they're saying it is, but I believe there's something. But you never go see what that something could be. You love the world so much that you accept everything that it says as your own truth. Never seeking your own truth. Never, never seeking. You can't keep copying everyone's answers. You can't, you can't just keep looking over your shoulder and copying everyone's answers. Every time there's a project coming up, you can't just call people and say, hey, what you doing? You know, I, I want to copy what you're doing. What are your ideas? And hold them as your own truths. You can't keep doing this. At some point in time, you have to go home. Instead of wandering outside and playing outside and doing a whole bunch of things that have no meaning, sometimes you're going to have to go home. Put yourself in your room. Close the door. Turn off your phone. And study. A lot of classwork in school is not hard. It's only because you don't put the time in to study. You can sit in a classroom all day and listen to someone who's knowledgeable teach you. The reason why they're able to deliver this type of teaching to you is because they have done years of studying and research and seeking. And they have acquired knowledge to teach it to you. That's why they're professors. But you can sit in the classroom all day and feel like you have learned nothing. But I'm telling you from my own experience with, you know, my uh, collegiate career and things like that. But, well, you know, high school too, it doesn't matter, whatever school you went to. But when you go home and put in the, the work, you read the chapters for yourself. You go over the examples of problems, whether it be mathematics or whatever. You go over it for yourself and you practice it. You say, oh, I get it. I get it. That's what she was trying to say, or that's what he was trying to say. There's a lot of things that you're just not understanding because you're not seeking. But the truths are evident. They're all around, they're evident. And you know they are. You know that you know they're evident. But you're just not seeking, so you don't understand. For the Lord has said, My people perish because of lack of knowledge. You see, the problem is 
you don't fear the Lord enough. But that's okay. That's okay. Because I'll tell you right now, the Lord's compassion and mercy, it says that it endures forever. But he can't do nothing about your decision. He will have compassion and mercy if you turn your heart. Oh, that endures forever. You turn your heart, it, it's fine. But there's nothing he can do about your decision. Even those that burn in the lake of fire will burn for a thousand years and be revisited. And they will still have the same decision. This is how wickedness... This, <laughs> This is how wickedness resonates in people. When you don't humble your heart, you grow in wickedness. I want you guys to understand this. That the sons of God, they grow in Jesus. They grow in righteousness. They start out as babes in Christ getting their feet wet, learning things, receiving knowledge and understanding and wisdom on certain levels. Certain bad habits and unclean things begin to leave them. They struggle and wrestle with certain things in spirit. They fall, but they get back up each time. They grow a little weary, but they come back to their father and they get rest and strength. They have trials and tribulations, but the Lord carries them through it and they learn something from each one. They grow in Christ. And the end result for the sons of God is that they come into the fullness of the Lord Jesus, where they are lacking nothing, learning how to abound with or without things. They have complete joy, gladness, and content, and they are holy and righteous in every way. That is the end result for the sons of God. But for you, for you people that choose not to follow Jesus, choose not to conform to his image, choose your own paths of understanding and knowledge based off of the world, doctrines of devils, choose to have these strongholds and altars placed over your life in which you serve, some of you willingly or unknowingly. For you people, you grow in Satan. For you start out stealing. You might start out robbing. You might even start out deceiving. Then you graduate to a little bit of gossip. And a little bit of slander. Then you graduate to more hate and anger and oppressive thinking. Some of you graduate to murder and rage. And then some of you graduate to sexual immorality, doing things that are not convenient. Man on man, woman on woman, dressing like men, dressing like women if you're the opposite sex. Then some of you graduate to witchcraft. Go a whoring, playing with many different gods calling on the names of strange gods, getting results from them, not knowing that it is Satan that you're calling on. Then some of you graduate to false senses of success because Satan is not ready to reward you for the things that you've been doing. And then you grow in confidence in Satan and you go further and further away from God, not being able to even hear the corrections of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to reproof you and convict you of things. You can't even hear it because you're so deep in Satan. Oh, the Lord's made it this way. Anyone who is not for the Lord is against them. And he either spits you out of his mouth or he hands you over to evil. So it's not catching them off guard. 
Many of you say in your own hearts, but I live in this world. I have real bills. I have, I have, my mother's re really sick. You know, you know, I've, I've lost my wife and my husband. I've been abused. I've been this, I've been that. Like these are real things happening to me. I can't waste my time on focusing on something I can't see. Something that could be. Yet you guys rely on the sun to shine every day. You guys are so sure that you wake up in the morning. You make plans for the next day as if you already know you're going to wake up. So you have faith. Some of you say, oh, it's humid outside. We need, we need rain. And you look forward to the rain to break some of the humidity. You have faith. Some of you go to work every single day because you just know for sure that you're going to get that check every two weeks or, or every week. You trust the employers that they're going to pay you for your, your services. You have faith. Some of you say things like karma. Oh, you shouldn't have done that. That's going to come back to him or her. You have faith. You were destined to have faith. You were destined to conform to the image of the Lord. But free will. Free will has allowed sin into the world. And free will allows sin to reign over certain vessels. You've chosen this. You've chosen not to follow God. Those things that keep repeatedly happening in your, in your house to your family, you feel like you guys are always getting bad breaks or whatever the case may be. This is what happens when hearts are not turned to the Lord. Now, can bad things happen to the righteous? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you say in your heart, well, then how will we, what, what's the use of anything then? If bad is going to happen to those who turn to, to the Lord or not, then what's the use of serving? Well, I'll tell you this. The Lord takes away and the Lord gives. You have an accuser whose name is Satan. And he looks at everything that you do with his helpers. They watch you and anything that you can possibly do that might be displeasing to the Lord. He's going to bring it. He's going to bring it to the father. To accuse you that his anger may be upon you because of this action or thought or speech that you have. But the Lord is more faithful than anything, than anyone. Knowing his creation, knowing those who are predestined to conform to his image, meaning that knowing those who are predestined to serve him and be his people, because he knows these things. To prove a point to Satan. He will allow Satan to do certain things, even to his people, just to show them that they have unwavering faith, that they have unwavering desire to serve him, to be his people, that these people are clean. They are in the world, but not of it. And there is nothing that evil, sin, principalities, wickedness, or any high thing that exalts itself against the wisdom, knowledge, and righteousness of the Lord. There is nothing that can be done to break the love of the Father for his people. That is the reason why trials and tribulations are allowed. It is to strengthen you. It is for you to know the different facets of who you serve. Because if he tells you he's a deliverer, he has to put you in something that you can be delivered from. If he says that he's a healer, that he's going to have to make you 
sick or something where you can see that he heals. If he's conquering, then he's going to have to put you in trials where you are fearful or you feel like you are going to be, you know, besieged by enemies. And you come out conquering in it. The Lord does many things for your good. All things work for your good. Sometimes the Lord just wants to show you off. He just wants to show you off. Yeah. Go 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 trouble her. Go trouble her. Yeah, do do what you do what you feel that you want to do, Satan. And see how my presence reigns over this person. Go ahead and try it. And while you're struggling, trust me, the Lord The Lord's ways is not your ways, and his thoughts are not your thoughts. And he doesn't give to you the way the world gives. So what you see as a struggle, or why would the Lord do this to me? How can he allow me to be abused in this way, or how can these things happen? The Lord is just in every way. In every way. And in everything, he finds a way for you to know him. As long as you humble yourself. No, people are not paying for the sins. People are not paying for the sins of their ancestors. But just know that if there is a house that is sinning and full of iniquity, and there is no heart that is repenting and turning to the Lord, that that house can suffer. The whole house can suffer. Someone has to repent. Someone has to repent and ask for forgiveness. Repenting is turning away from sin. You have to turn away. You have to fight the good fight. You can't just get a temptation, temptation and give into it. If you feel lust in your heart, you can't just give into it and start watching pornography or lusting after women and committing adultery if you know you're married. If you feel the need to have something that you feel you deserve that your neighbor has. You can't just go stealing. If you have anger in your heart for somebody, you can't just go killing them. You have to fight the good fight. Let yourself be weak if you feel weak. Because when you're weak, you're strong. The Lord will reward you for resisting Satan. He will make a way out for you to endure the temptation. But if you give in, you're not fighting the good fight. You have to fight. Put up a fight. When you leave this earth and you give up the ghost, you, you have fought the good fight. You have to fight. If you resist, if you resist, if you resist, the Lord will make a way and you will come out of it. And every time you resist, you grow as a soldier. At some point in time, the resisting becomes easier and you move on to more stronger trials and tribulations because you, you grow up in Christ. I know you hear me. Whether you choose to humble yourself and adhere to the word of the spirit, adhere to the words of Jesus. That's on you, but I know you hear me. The Lord's words would not return void. They're piercing. You can hear me. You're not fighting. When temptation comes over you and, and lust, you're giving into it. No, you're doing things that you know you shouldn't be doing. It's okay. If you fall, if you fall, understandable. You, you, you can fall and you will get back up in righteousness. But some of you are not even falling. You're just laying down. And, I, and trust me, I'm speaking off of experience. You think I'm perfect, man? Come on. The way I speak this way because of he who is in me. I'm made this way. The Lord made me this way. I'm not even the same person a, a few months ago. A year ago, I keep growing and learning. But some of you are not falling. You're just laying down. 
You're surrendering to sin. You say, who can be perfect? Oh, you can be perfect in Christ. You can be perfect because Christ is perfect. And Christ lives in you. If you yield to the spirit of the Lord, you will be perfect. You will find yourself without sin. The Lord will make it that way. You will lack nothing. Sin will not be in you. It might dwell with you, but it will not be in you. Come on. I'm not speaking this forcefully, trying to convert you to anything. This, this forceful speaking or aggressive speaking is my spirit. The spirit of Jesus Christ in me is speaking expre expressively to you. Calling you out loud. How long will you hear these things and not ponder on it? For how long will you hear these things and make it fall to the wayside? Let the seed be planted and you water it. Stop thinking that you don't have to do any work. You have to do something. But trust me, the work is light compared to what sin will make you do. Trying to fight sin on your own is an everlasting battle that you will lose. Sin is too great for you to overcome it by yourself. Stop thinking that when you die and you die without Christ, that when you wake up, that Christ is going to give you the low down on everything and say, it's OK. You didn't understand. You didn't understand. Come with me. No. For the Lord sends out his prophets and his servants and all of his hand picked to spread the gospel, to speak in spirit, words of Christ that are piercing things that you definitely hear. And you definitely know that it is truth. But because of sin and wickedness that abounds in you, you refuse it. So for those that refuse it, your reward is hell. Satan did not make hell. Our Father, God Almighty, Lord of hosts, has made it. And the fire of the Lord burns there for eternity. This is a place made by the Father, the same way heaven is made by the Father, a place for people who serve him to dwell with him in eternity in eternity, and complete blissful living. And then he made a place for those who are not going to serve him. For eternity, they will go there in a wretched pain and agonizing death. Satan has no power. He has not created anything. He is not responsible for anything other than deceiving. And the reason why he deceives you is because he takes all of the knowledge that he knew when he was with the father. Things of spirit. And he uses, he uses these things against those who choose not to live in spirit. Who choose to live according to the flesh and according to the world. You choose to live in a dying thing, reaping knowledge and understanding and wisdom of a dying thing. Some of you say in your heart who know a little bit of scripture. Well, why, if God is God, why would he say that Satan is the God of this world? Well, then you ask yourself. Is it a major thing? To give somebody a grand or big title to something that is dying? <sighs> it 
if I sell you a, a land of mine, if I sell you a land of mine, for you to have to grow things that I know that in this region, you may not know it, but I know that in this region, no rain falls. No rain falls. But I sell it to you because you're so eager to have land and own something. And I sell you a land for you to grow things and grow crops and grow stuff, even though I know that there's no water that falls in this region. Did I lose anything? Sure, you reign over that land. That is your land. Nobody can come there unless they go through you. You know, but you are ruler of a desolate place that is dead. Nothing lives there. So has the father lost anything? Stop relying on your knowledge. There's things that are beyond you that you will never know and understand lest the Father reveals these things to you. For the Pharisees did not understand it. And these are supposed to be people who esteem themselves to be very spiritual, knowledgeable about things of Scripture, biblically. But even these could not even see the one who was promised to come standing right in front of them. Men and women, young men and young, young women, boys and girls, incline your hearts to Jesus Christ. Stop wasting time. For many of you are going to be called, but few are chosen. Answer the call that you may learn something. Stop just going to work your nine to five and, 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 and reaching after these goals of wanting to do. There's nothing wrong with wanting to acquire things. For the children of God are not meant to live in poverty. But if poverty has been set on any of the children of God, trust and believe it is because a miraculous thing is going to happen within that situation for the Lord likes to do things that seem foolish to people so that you know that he is God the Lord will have somebody with no legs healing people the Lord will have the blind become a president of a country or a ruler of a certain area or someone that people look to for guidance. The Lord will take prostitutes and clean them up and then have them and fill them with love and have them teaching about <laughs> all of the ways of the Lord. I know that no one's going to come to the Father unless he draws him near. I know that. And I'm not trying to force or make you come. I know these things. But cannot the Father use me for you to hear? Cannot the Father use many others for you to hear? You say to yourself that, oh, when Christianity, they try to force things and more people have died in the name of Christianity than any other thing. Let me tell you something about Christianity. People who have died, if you're talking about the Crusades and all these things, that ain't Christianity. 
These are, these are demons that are distorting and corrupting the word of God to oppress others. That's, that's, there's a reason why during slavery you were not allowed to read your Bible. So don't, I don't want to hear that. And when Paul, when the Apostle Paul in, 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 the, in the area of Antioch came, came up upon those people, he didn't know what to call these people. Because the hand of God was on them, their ways, everything about them. He saw the hand of God on these people in Antioch. You can do your history. You can read the Bible if you're not reading it and understand what I'm saying. He didn't know what to call these people and he called them Christians or Christians. It's no different if you was to go to Jamaica. and The first person who went to Jamaica and called the people that was there Jamaicans. Or you go to India and you call the people Indians. You go to Colombia, Colombians. I mean, America, Americans. In that land, he didn't know what to, he didn't know what to call them because they were not Jews. These were considered Gentile people, but living like Christ. The hand of God was on them. He chose them. He didn't know what to call them. He couldn't call them Jews. So if they are in Christ and they are living in the land of Christ, then they're Christians, Christians, whatever, however you want to pronounce it. Stop allowing people to tell you who Jesus is. He is not the image that is depicted in this world. His ways are not the ways that people are learning about in this world from mass media. Go find out who Jesus Christ is for yourself. And trust me, when the Spirit of the Lord comes over you and convicts you, you will never be the same. It's better for you to be a fool for him than to be pleasurable to the world. For as long as you live in the world, brother and sister, boy and girl, young man and young woman, For as long as you live in the world and love it and form relationship with the world, the world is going to love you. Conversations are going to be easy for you to have, engage in, fit in. You're going to find comforts here or at least ways of living that are normal and you can just fit it in your lifestyle. Time will pass when you love the world and it it will pass in some form of comforting way to you because you'll always be able to find somebody that you can relate to but it's when you can't relate to anything it's when you feel like an outsider it's when you feel like a stranger in the world where you just can't get with anything nothing seems to make sense you you don't follow the crowd you 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 feel like you're meant to go a different way you feel alone in the world It is because you are called. For lovers of the world is enmity with God. You cannot love the world and love God. The world hates God. Don't get it twisted when people keep talking about, oh, thank God, thank God. Who's your God? I want to thank God for everything. You never hear them say, Jesus, how can you go to the Father but yet through Jesus? Don't be deceived by anyone who thanks God for everything. There are many gods to people. But there's only one true God. And there's only one true worshipers of God. This is a remnant of people. You will know them by their fruits. The true worshipers of God, the sons of God, you know them by their fruits. You know them by their ways how they make you feel, how they carry themselves. You know them because in them houses the spirit of the Lord. The living spirit of the Lord lives in them. They are dead to themselves and they live through Christ. So the glory of God shines through them and they become the light of the world, adding salt to everything Stop what you're doing. Stop yourself in your tracks right now and repent. 
Repent means turn away from your evil. Turn away from your sins. Turn away from anything that is not holy and righteous. Then ask for forgiveness for everything that you have done thus far that has not been holy and righteous. And turn your hearts to Jesus. Read your scriptures. Read your scriptures. Go get a Bible, King James, and read. You want to read the NIV? Fine. But get some word in you. They're not much different. Read. Because God is the same God then as he is now. Learn how he moved back then. Learn about the people that were chosen by God back then. The relationships that they had and the trials and things that they went through. Learn from these things so that you can apply it to your own life. That you can see that God is still the same God. And that the devil is still the same old serpent. That is the point of reading the scriptures. You finding God and building your relationship with him comes from here. Prayer. Prayer and supplication. Thanksgiving. Seeking him. That's how you build it. But the scriptures help because they, you learn about how the father moves. And he puts it all together for you. Some of you have a calling where he would, he would probably move you way faster than how he moved me. As long as it's taking me to get to where I'm at, you might get there in three days. All depending on the, the will that he has for your life, the calling that he has for your life, the purpose. There's no respect of persons. Lord doesn't, there's no respect of per, per, persons. No one is more favored than the next. Anyone who calls upon the, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved and delivered, filled with the Holy Spirit. Anyone. Do you want to be that someone? Or you want to live this mediocre, perishing life? Acquiring clothes, acquiring vacations and houses and cars, having a little bit of money in, in, in the bank and living in a nice neighborhood, having a bit of stocks. And what does these things mean, man? How much stocks, how much treasures can you store up on this world that will surpass the things that are in heaven? You tell me, what's the number? Tell me how much heaven costs. I want to know so I can start saving. I say that sarcastically. No one, Bill Gates, whoever, whoever, Elon Musk, whoever, whoever these, no one can buy heaven. No one can buy salvation. I tell you this, without repentance, without repentance, it is the rich man that will go first into that lake of fire. Satan first and his helpers, but then goes the rich man. You see, it's the difference between acquiring wealth even in the land of the living on earth. It's a difference between acquiring wealth from the kingdom of God and acquiring it from earth. A rich man will not give up his riches that he has acquired from, quote unquote, the hands of his own labor, his own intellect. He is not going to give up those riches to follow the ways of the kingdom of God. For he has already proud himself on acquiring these things of his own merit. But a poor man, a poor man will be first in the kingdom of God. 
For when he has nothing, he calls on the name of the Lord, trusting that there is more that awaits him than the current state that he is in. And he endures, he endures the will of God, not questioning to the point where he turns away his faith, not questioning his circumstances, but understanding that there is a wisdom and a knowledge and a way that surpasses his understanding. And he endures in this world, in this life, whatever it is he has, he has to endure. This man is first in the kingdom and great is he in the kingdom. Stop what you're doing and turn to Jesus Christ. Seek him daily, praying daily. Remove yourself from those who are not following holiness and righteousness and get acquainted with the Lord. Take some time away from the world. Be alone and read the scriptures and pray. Grow in Christ that he reveals and manifests himself to you that you may know him. And when he manifests himself to you, you will not go back to the world. You will not go back to those group of friends that you were you were with. You will not you will no longer feel comfort in the things that you used to feel comfort in. For there is no other way that can do this for you. There's no other way. There's no other way. But through Christ Jesus, there's no other way. Jesus is not a prophet. He is the son of God. God manifested in man so that you may know what the father looks like. What his ways look like amongst men. How else will you have known the father and what he looks like? Jesus is what the Father looks like amongst men. Many of you may die for your own children, but I'm willing to bet that none of you, <laughs> including myself, will have that type of heart to die for the wicked, to die for the good and the evil, that they all may have a chance to come into the truth. Many of you, if not all of you, do not have that type of heart. This is what the Father looks like. Relentless compassion and mercy for those that call on Him. Do not die without Christ. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that that does not happen. But do not die without Christ thinking that the Lord will meet you and have mercy on your decision to refuse the correction of the Spirit. At that time is judgment. The Lord did not create hell for no reason. Hell will not be empty because of His compassion. No. Compassion and mercy is shown all throughout the land of the living. Daily, every day you wake up is compassion and mercy. He could have took your life while you were asleep, dead in your sin. But every day you wake up is, is compassion and mercy. Compassion and mercy is shown in the land of the living. But when you leave this land of the living, judgment is shown. <laughs> 